so hello everyone and welcome to the second part of this video tutorial series on OpenGL 2D game programming this is Sunny out here I'm Ratul and this is Pentamolis project and so in the last part of this video um, last part of this video series um, we created this uh, window using the glut library and uh, if uh, you can see the default color of this uh, default background color of this window is black and uh, so this black color is because of the OpenGL state variable, which is the GL clear color, which is by default black, and um, which is by default black. So if you want to change it, um, you need to know how to work with the RGB values. Basically, you change this using the function which is GL clear um, color. So this sets the RGB RGB a value of the clear color. So um, you should um, define a simple function to do uh, initial uh, do a dif uh, define a sim different function to do the initialization stuff. So, which we will call init, which stands for initialization, and this function should be called before the main loop. Um, uh, and so, this function uh, we can use this function now to set the clear color of the window. So. This uh, is a state variable and it won't change unless you, you uh, yourself change. Um, uh, once set, it won't change unless you yourself um, redefine it. Uh, or by default, the color um, is uh, black and the RGB values are 0 for all colors and the alpha value is 1.0. And if you don't know what the alpha value is, um, uh, you don't need to worry about it because it is by default 1.0 and we're going to keep it so in uh, this video tutorial series and because we don't need to use this this is a complex stuff so now let's work with the RGB value so by default uh, um, the uh, color is black and so the intensity of red green and blue is zero so zero intensity of all colors results in black and the full intensity of um, all three colors will result in a white color and how the intensity uh, and let's now know um, how the inst intensity works so by default um, um, three arguments red green and blue intensity of all uh, three of them is zero and let's keep the alpha 1.0 by default and let's not worry about this and so um, the intensity is specified using a floating point uh, value between 0 and 1 0 being the lowest intensity of a color and 1 being the highest and you should not go uh, um, to an, uh, with a number in, uh, which is greater than 1 or less than 0 which may uh, give unexpected results so the first uh, argument is the intensity of the red color which is a zero by default and let's change this to 1.0 which is the highest intensity of red and compiler uh, okay this won't yet work because um, this won't yet work because uh, we are not clearing the color buffer each time the frame is displayed so uh, you need to clear the color buffer to the default clear uh, to the clear color which you've set so this is done through GL clear and it clears the buffer which is spec uh, specified by the argument and so let's spec uh, to specify the color buffer we use uh, GL color uh, buffer bit so this means that uh, we are now clearing the color buffer so the color buffer will be clear to the value which is specified by the GL clear color and the and so the color buffer so the background of the screen will now be this uh, which we are we have specified and so now it should be red and there we get a red window and now um, if you specify uh, if you increase the intensity of the green color to uh, to full and uh, we'll get a mixture of uh, equal amounts of red and green which is yellow and we can also increase the intensity of blue to half and recompile a program <coughs> and check how it works and you get uh, this color and uh, so this is the way how uh, RGB values work and but uh, we need a black background so we'll keep the values uh, to default uh, 0, 0.0 of uh, all the colors and so this is how the RGB values will work and now we can move on to the setting up the uh, to set uh, the projection 
uh, projection metrics and uh, the viewport of our uh, screen so we uh, now before setting up the projection we need to familiar with what is called the reshape callback in OpenGL uh, in GLUT uh, library um, so uh, which is registered through GLUT reshape function so this registered the reshape callback um, which is called whenever uh, which is called at first when the window is created and after that whenever the window is um, maximized minimized or resized or moved around the screen um, so in um, now the reshape function ta uh, re registers the reshape callback and the callback should uh, have void return type and should take two uh, integers uh, as arguments so these integers uh, will be uh, will be the width and height of the new created uh, of the window which is now res uh, window after it is resized or moved or whatever and so we need to define a similar function here and let's uh, call it void uh, reshape callback which takes uh, two integers as arguments and let's register this down here and so we've now registered the reshape function for glut now let's define this uh, function down here and it takes two arguments the width and the height of the window after it is uh, resized so the width and the height of the window are passed by the glut to this reshape callback function which we can now use so as we know that a reshape callback is called when the window is first created and after that whenever it is resized or moved um, so we can uh, effectively use this function to set up our viewport because every time the window is uh, f uh, for the first time when the window is created and every time it is resized we need to reset the viewport and the projection of our program so the reshape callback function is the perfect place to define all that stuff so first we need to set the viewport and now what is a viewport so um, viewport is the rectangular area in which the objects we draw will be uh, drawn so um, so we need to set a viewport which covers the whole area of the window from this point so a rectangle from this point which covers whole area to this point so starting point of the rectangle should be here 0 comma 0 position of the window to the width comma height position so um, now to set the reach, uh, to set set the viewport, we need to use a function which is gl uh, viewport. So uh, the gl viewport function uh, sets um, the viewport of the window and the ar uh, argument it takes. You can uh, look uh, look around here. So the first x and y position of the rectangle and the width and the height of the viewport then so it is going to be 0 comma 0 the way I told you here um, and uh, then it will be the width and height the viewport should be equal to the width and height of the window uh, like we work uh, like just I told you here so if you look uh, that the type is GL size I and the um, type passed uh, in by the uh, GLUT library is uh, integer so we need to cast this to the GL size i and so now this will initialize a viewport which starts uh, viewport rectangle which starts at 0 comma 0 at this point to the width comma height point which will be this so when i resize the window the reshape callback is called with the new width and height passed as an argument so the new viewport will be from this point 0 comma 0 to the width comma height of the window which will be here so the viewport will always cover whole of the area of our window And so the next thing uh, after setting up the viewport you need to worry about is setting up the projection like making uh, setting up the coordinate system how the coordinate system inside your window will work so we want it this way so the 
left uh, bottom left of the window should be our origin which is 0 comma 0 point and there should be 40 units uh, from bottom to top of the window and from left to right of the window so the point 40 to 40 comma 40 should lie at uh, this place and 20 comma 20 should lie in the middle of the window so this is how we want our orthographic projection to be set up inside the window um, and this will be now used to draw objects in the window so we are currently uh, in the model view matrix which is used for models and objects um, and stuff and so for setting up the projection we need to go uh, change the matrix mode to the uh, projection matrix so um, uh, the matrix mode is state variable and it is, uh, it is changed through GL matrix mode function and it takes the m argument uh, the name of the mode which is um, enumerated type of uh, enumerated variable mode which is um, the name of the new mode which is we're going to switch to so to switch to the projection matrix we need to pass this enumeration GL projection um, into the function which we, uh, so now we have changed the matrix mode to the GL projection and we can proceed uh, on setting on um, our projection matrix so uh, first uh, the routine which will be we will call here is load identity which makes sure that uh, um, there are no no changes yet made to the um, to the matrix so all changes will be set as they are by default at, at the start so no changes will start fr uh, from the very beginning so that's why I've used this function load identity um, and so we have loaded the identity now and the next thing we will uh, what we, um, we will do is we'll set up the projection so we have choices between the perspective and the orthographic projection here um, but uh, so the perspective uh, uh, usually in 3d games the projection type used is perspective uh, but uh, we are going to work here with two dimensions and the orthographic will uh, work fine and if you don't know uh, what these projections are uh, you can find the suitable tutorials um, on the internet and learn about the projections but i'm not not going to cover the, uh, those here because uh, we have uh, we don't have enough time and we're going to focus on uh, the game develop uh, on game development here and so we will now set up an orthographic projection which is done through GL ortho you can also use uh, glue ortho 2d but uh, I guess uh, I think this is simpler than that so it takes uh, six arguments which uh, the first one is the leftmost point of the wind uh, leftmost point of the window of the x-axis and the rightmost point y-axis similarly uh, x-axis sorry here x-axis this is and similarly for y-axis the bottom most point and the top most point and the last two arguments the nearest and far um, the furthermost uh, point at which the objects are visible so this usually uh, so z near and z far uh, usually specify a range in which the objects are visible so um, I just showed you the image here this we want point this way so um, um, so to initialize the coordinate system in uh, uh, this way we want 40 up 40 right uh, and stuff uh, so to set it this way um, we will s uh, set the leftmost point to 0 comma 0 uh, 0, 0.0 because uh, the um, because our origin is to be uh, should lie on the leftmost point, um, and the rightmost point will be 40.0 because it is 40 from left to right, and similarly from uh, at the bottommost point will be 0, 0.0, and the topmost will be 40.0, and so this gives us a 40 into 40 um, coordinate system. Uh, 40 up and 40 to the right side and the origin at the bottom left of the window and now the next thing will be z near uh, setting up the z near and z far points so the nearest point uh, to which the objects will be visible we should set this to uh, the, so these are the value f values for the z axis you need to first of all um, know this um, and so the nearest distance 
we should set to 1.0 and the farthest 1.0 so you should know the negative value of the z-axis um, uh, is like uh, coming out of the screen to your side and the positive value of the z-axis is going inside the screen so the range will be the nearest point at which the stuff will be visible will be minus 1.0 and the uh, furthermost distance at which the stuff will be visible will be 1.0 so we are going to draw the stuff at a zero value of z-axis so that point lies between uh, this range and so that will be visible and that's all we need here and rest of the stuff about z-axis you don't need to worry about that because uh, we're not going to cover that in this tutorial series and to keep things simple we'll just work with x and y axis in the 2d coordinate system and so now after setting up the or an orthographic projection in the projection matrix you now need to switch back to uh, the model view matrix because the rest of the activities will take part in the model view matrix so we uh, use the that matrix mode command here again and now we go to the GL model view matrix and so now we've switched to back to the model view matrix and now we're ready to go and compile a program so this should make no change in the window because uh, we've not yet drawn anything on the screen and uh, the drawing stuff will be covered in the next part of the uh, next part of this series so until then goodbye and take care